I run the cattle so I can wear a cowboy hat. I run the sheep to make the payments. I'm Robert Boylan. Uh, we're in oh, was about the almost the center of the ranch in Butte County in northwest South Dakota, um, north of Newell. Well, the original part of the ranch was about, I believe it was 8,900 acres. And my granddad worked for the man that owned it for 29 or 30 years. And I'd come out and help when I could. I was working on ranches in Wyoming at the time, but um, always wanted to try to buy it. Just never had no money. And he sold it to a lease purchase deal to some yearling guys out of Montana. It was terrible dry. I think it was 2002 that year. And they backed out of the deal. And the old fella, he lived in Wisconsin. His name was John Roach. He called me and asked me if I wanted to buy it. And he told me to figure out what I thought I could pay for it and come up with some earnest money. And I believe I borrowed 14,000 from my dad and my brother and offered him $100 an acre. And he accepted it and called me back and said I bought a ranch. So uh, very grateful to that man. I don't know of any ranches that aren't paid for that can make it without diversification. Um, you either need a spouse working in town with insurance or what we have went to, we've started a little bike rally bar that's, you know, no runaway, but, you know, makes a couple months worth of groceries for us. And then we've also uh, incorporated uh, a wedding venue on the ranch that has really blossomed and done well. We range lamb about May 20th. We start lambing. We try to do it like the deer and the wildlife do. Um, we usually gather them right after the 4th of July and dock them and, and we go into a grazing rotation from there. Uh, rest rotation, grazing and uh, the cattle, we don't start calving until you know, the 20th of April anymore and uh, try to work with nature and uh, sell a little less pounds per calf, but we sell a lot more pounds for live calves, I guess. Um, that deal and selling my hay machinery is probably the two best things I ever did for what this ranch provides anyway. Robert's been working diligently um, for years on improving his ranch. And uh, NRCS has been a partner with Robert, working with them to make improvements and improvements to the infrastructure and to his grazing management, which he's been at for several years now. And now Robert's kind of starting to shift his focus to other resource concerns that he has. You know, he's been working on getting livestock distribution, improving the uplands, and you know, he's always looking at new things. He's always looking at what's next and what might be a resource concern out here. And now we're working with him on some low tech riparian structures that he's implementing here to try to improve his riparian areas. He's, he talked to you guys a little bit about the woody species and uh, you know, the cottonwoods and the willows that he's been seeing and really just how to improve that resource and bring it closer to potential. As I visited the uh, Boylan Ranch and started working with Robert on, on some projects. The one thing I noticed is that on the landscape, there's a softness to it now, whereas a lot of places you'll see across the landscape, there's harshness. And what that is, is that it's the erosion that's occurring on those smaller scales out in those fields. And so as you go around the Boylan Ranch and Robert's place here, You'll notice that although it's a dry year and some of the upland grasses might be a little short this year, you'll notice that the riparian areas and those green areas and the green lines are intact. They're covering the stream banks. They're saving the soil, whatever does run off when we do get a rain. All of the pieces are there in those riparian areas. Robert's worked hard to make sure that all those components are there. The stream banks have got so sharp over the years from overgrazing probably, it's hard to get it back to nice, you know, swale draws and stuff. We can all work at it. Now, once you get to it, it's economically 
doing me better. The more grass I leave, the, the more time I give a pasture to rest, the more grass we got, the more cows we run, um, and with less work. So we couldn't have done none of these big projects without the NRCS and stuff. I had the EQIP program, um, the ECP, and now we're in the process. We worked on it, I believe, for three years to drill a well with six other neighbors and uh, it'll be a dream come true for me if we get it up and going and everything works good and, yeah and it'll benefit everything from the grass to the wildlife to the livestock to, to my pocketbook so yeah well i'm no expert i'm not perfect i'm not even i may lose everything yet so i'm doing what i can the best i can i'm trying to make it as productive as i can so we'll be able to be passed down someday.